video you just watched, The Inner Life of the Cell, starts us off on a journey to understand better what is actually going on inside each and every one of your cells in your body. We have quite a bit to go through in this section as far as new information for you, but we're going to keep it fairly simple and your focus should be on structure and function. So what does the cell part look like and what does it do? So to start out, let's think a little bit about what it means to be a cell. There are a lot of different types of cells. In this case, we've got plant cells, we've got yeast that you're probably familiar with. This is one of the only single-celled eukaryotes. So we talk about yeast a lot as being a very special kind of cell. And then we have things like blood and endothelium. Endo is inside. And when we talk about thelium, we're always talking about layers. So this is essentially an inside protective layer that we see for the inside of your capillaries, blood vessels, inside of your organs, lots of places. How do we know what these things look like? Well, we can actually look at them directly using microscopy. Some things you can see. There are single cells that you can see. A chicken egg. I think you can see it, right? Sure, okay. Frog eggs, we can certainly see frog eggs, all right? You can even see things like paramecium. You see down to about 100 micrometers pretty easily. If we wanna look at anything smaller than that, we actually have to use microscopy to do it. So magnification is simply looking at an object under a magnified condition, enlarging its size so that you can see it and see its detail. Resolution is how well you see it. So you may see things in a distance, but you might not be able to make out what they actually are. It might be fuzzy to you. You might not be able to tell if an animal off in the distance across a field is a deer or a dog. Okay, there we have to get into the idea that if we want to look at resolution, we want to actually know when we look at something small that we can actually discern if there are two objects there, if there really are. This becomes important when we're trying to look inside something as small as one of your cells. We use a number of different microscopes to look at cells. Light microscopy is one that is most frequently used and the one we typically see in biology labs. We're looking at passing light through a specimen and then through a glass lens and then into your eye. We can actually magnify about a thousand times with a light microscope. So this is not going to let you see the smallest of objects, but you can certainly see even chromosomes at this level. So getting a pretty good sense of what's going on. So here's our light microscopy range. You can look down to some of the smallest bacteria uh, with a light microscope, and certainly everything in between. All of the organelles, or the parts inside your cells, we can see all of those. We can see um, many bacteria, and so on. Now, when we start to get into smaller things like viruses, and if you actually want to look at some of those macromolecules we talked about, like a protein or a lipid, we'd actually have to use something known as electron microscopy, which takes us from about 100 microns down to approximately 0.1 nanometers. So nano, remember, is 10 to the minus 9. Micro is 10 to the minus 6, okay? So just to give you some idea of what's what's going on with our with our units here okay so with electron microscopy actually was developed to start looking at the tiny structures of cells so trying to understand and get at the differences of things that are only two nanometers across these are tiny tiny things we're magnifying with the electron microscope about 100,000 times rather than 1,000 times. So much better uh, at seeing very small things and being able to look at better resolution associated with them. This is something known as a scanning electron microscopy image, or an SEM. 
scanning means we're looking at the outside. You're looking at the surface. So we're interested in seeing what's on the outside of something. In this case, this is a paramecium. And you see he looks pretty fuzzy, right? Well, he's not technically fuzzy or furry. Instead, he's covered in cilia and flagella that are going to help him move around. Here's the internal structure of something known as a toxoplasm. So another type of organism where we're looking at internal structures now, transmission, or TEM, microscopy, allows us to look at those inside structures. We'll look at these in more detail, and you'll be able to come back to this later and pick out some of the internal structures associated with this organism. We have some very large vacuoles that we'll learn about. We've got some different um, structures as far as building proteins and so on. So I encourage you to come back and look at this after we go through some more detail about our, our cells. Again, a TEM, again, of a paramecium. So you can see the difference between the SEM, the outside, and the TEM, the inside. So you see, you still see some of those little hairs, but he certainly looks much different than in that first picture I showed you. These are small vacuoles full of food particles, things he's trying to ingest and eat. We've got a lot going on here. These would be chloroplast-like structures, all kinds of things. So interesting structures. And you can come back to these later and, and try to identify some more of those structures as well. We go one step further now and go into something known as fluorescence confocal microscopy. And this is looking at internal structures, but instead of just having kind of that blank, colorless image I showed you before, we now go in and actually fluorescently tag things or label them with fluorescent markers. So in this case, the DNA is actually labeled pink. So any place you see pink, there would be DNA associated with it. And then in this case, the yellow is actually labeling cytoplasm or cytoskeleton. So looking at those kinds of different structures we'll get into later on. This is actually a nerve cell if you're interested.